Hi there, thanks for stopping by on my user review of the 7 Audition 50mm f0.95 lens. Okay, so I'm sure 0.95 is hard to roll off the tongue, so we're just gonna round it up to f1. And now with that out of the way, a lens with an f1 aperture, you might think and you already know there are bound to be defects with the image quality. And to be honest, I myself had my doubts after making the purchase. So really the question is, are the cons really that bad? Is it unusably bad? Or can we sum it up as the lens character? Well, hopefully through the sample images and footage that you see, uh, you'll be able to tell yourself whether the cons are actually a complement to the lens character or not. And sorry, there are no shards here, no paper, no corner edge test, just real images from the real world. And like they always say, you know, a picture says a thousand words. So let's see what this lens tells us about its character. Starting out with some of the pros, we got the design. At first glance, this lens is pretty short compared to other similar spec lenses. But don't be fooled by the size, this lens is pretty heavy. And we're gonna circle back on the weight issue when we talk about the cons later on in this video. But as of now, it is a decently compact size that will fit in your camera bag easily. Fortunately, the build quality feels good. Everything is solid metal and slick looking. Especially, I gotta say, I love that black finish on the mounting plate. It doesn't add anything to the image, but you gotta love that black on everything. So I just wish more manufacturers do this. It'll be really cool. A nice improvement over similar budget lenses is that the numbers are actually engraved in the metal of the lens, resulting in long-lasting markings on your lens, and that is great if you ever decide to resell the lens. It will still look pretty nice, I suppose. And actually, speaking of the inscription, I really like the font that they chose on the margins. Is it just me? Or is anybody else out there bothered by ugly fonts? Let me know in the comment section down below. But well, another pleasant surprise is how well this lens handles diffraction. Virtually, it's invisible. I can't tell how degraded the image gets in low apertures such as f16 and f11. It's showing really great results. I mean, I had other lenses like the Pergear 35mm and the 12 millimeter f2 lens now those lenses could get up to like f8 to get the optimal optical image quality but anything lower than that like f11 f16 you're gonna suffer from diffraction so i usually stay away from those aperture but this one i can easily hit f16 the lowest minimal aperture and it's not gonna affect the image that much so i was really surprised about that Handling, to those that care, the aperture ring is clickless. There you go. Now this next point should be a con, but I have to bring it up here because it's related with the aperture ring on that it just happened to be on the front of the lens. As opposed to the rear of the lens where most of lens manufacturers put them, including Fuji. So I'm still trying to get used to this design. I don't know if it was a decision made based on keeping like the lens shorter. I don't know how it would affect it, the design, but yeah, it's there. It's on the front and I'm still trying to get used to it. Now, fortunately, both the focus and the aperture ring turn smoothly. So that's the important thing. Image quality, you've been watching it right now. What do you all think? Now, I'll be honest. In saying that wide open, of course, is softer than the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I mean, even with the focus assist on the Fujifilm system, I had a hard time telling what's in focus, especially at minimal focus distance or when I'm far away. So it helps, but it's still difficult. But this softness is, a, is not a deal breaker because that's not without saying that with some extra work in post, you'll get amazing results. I mean, you're looking at the pictures shooting wide open. I could still edit the raw files and bring out the crispiness and contrast and saturation. And they look amazing. I personally love how well the bokeh rolls off. It's not too sudden where it goes from sharp to blur. It's such a smooth transition. I mean, the overall quality of the bokeh is amazing. 
I'm comparing that up to the Pentax 50mm f1.4, the K-mount version. The bouquet on that lens is also soft, it's beautiful and creamy, but I could still see some haze on that lens. So the 7 Artisans has better definition on the bouquet balls, meaning better bouquet. And also it doesn't suffer from any onion rings, any artifacts inside of the bokeh ball so these are clean smooth bokeh now for some of the cons let's talk about the elephant in the room again let's deal with that weight issue even though it's so small it's pretty heavy on my xh1 it's pretty heavy setup by itself when you add the battery grip it becomes even heavier so i can't imagine smaller fuji cameras like the xe series or the x pro series handling this lens so well i wouldn't recommend it on a gimbal either because it's so front heavy now with that said fuji cameras usually have a grip or an adapter or a third party grip that will help you get a nice grip on your hold but if not yeah this is basically a lens for heavier beefier cameras like the xt4s and the xs10 and of course my trusty xh1 vignetting is there wide open, but it actually goes away very quickly. By f2.8, it clears up really nicely. And of course, by f4, f5.6, is non-visual. By far the biggest con, I have to say honestly, the biggest letdown after seeing some of the images for the first time is the purple and green fringing. Underexposing a little, avoiding shiny reflections, you know, changing my angles a little bit, helped a lot and when i was able to avoid color fringing i mean this lens yeah it felt like a 200 dollar prime lens but when it does show up i feel like it's like a 50 dollar optic on a metal frame guys be aware the fringing is there so yes even though this lens scared me at first with the purple fringing but the beautiful smooth bouquet you can achieve with this lens and seeing how sharp the images get even from f1.4 things sharpen up very drastically the smooth handling of both rings the solid build quality the aesthetics everything is just i think it's worth getting only if you keep your expectations in par with what the cheapo chinese manufacturer lens gives you if you keep your expectations on par you will be very satisfied with this purchase and of course, this lens is not going up against the Fuji's 50mm f1 and the 56 f1.2. I'm sorry if I got those mixed up. That's not without saying that even those Fuji non lenses do suffer from chromatic aberration. They do have fringing and softness wide open. This is just a defect that happens to most of these prime lenses with such a high aperture. For specs and current prices of this lens, affiliate links will be posted in the description. And if you do decide on purchasing it, through going through those links will help out the channel greatly. And I will be even more appreciated of that. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.